Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. So it finally happened. I got my first Porsche GT car allocation. Exciting times, I was over the moon to put it. But it's not your average GT car. It is of course the Porsche Taycan Turbo GT. So there was a lot of thinking to be done here. As you probably know, cars make me do funny noises and pretty much all rationale was about to go out the window and I was about to get this car at whatever cost it took because it seemed like too good an opportunity to pass up. A Porsche GT car allocation, right? But as I say, not your average GT car allocation. It's not a GT2 RS by any means. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the facts and figures and discussing my thought process here because there was a lot that went through my mind with this decision-making process. So I have to share it with you on, on camera. And please do comment. Let me know if you think it, it's the right course of action here because I struggle making decisions at the best of time. I really do, but this one was really, really tough. So let's get straight down to business and discuss the story here and look at exactly where we're at because it is a very interesting one. So I put an LOI and a letter of intent into Porsche probably last year sometime, I think over a year ago, expressing my interest in the upcoming mysterious Porsche Taycan super duper mega version, supposedly the GT, supposedly a three motor version. I put my LOI in because I love the Taycan. I really do think it is a fantastic car. It's such a great drive. I know some people can't get over the EV thing, but I can, and I really do think it's a phenomenal car, especially given the short amount of engineering time they've had with it and how, how short a time it's been on the market. But I put my LOI in, and of course, we saw the GT recently drop, and I got a call from my local Porsche dealer, my trusted salesman, to say that if I wanted one, I could have it. I thought, wow, I'm being offered a Porsche Taycan Turbo GT here. This is very, very exciting indeed. So I instantly started to do the man math, work out how I can make it possible. Don't forget, I'm not a business buyer of EVs. This is a personal purchase, probably the least tax efficient way to buy an EV, to be fair. But if I could make it work for a business, I absolutely would. Unfortunately, I don't have that facility quite yet. So it would be a private purchase. The Taycan Turbo GT is absolutely mega in terms of the numbers. It is mind blowing. I have covered it in a previous video, but it literally blows everything else out of the water and is probably one of the fastest cars, if not the fastest car on the road right now. It is just simply ludicrous. It The, the numbers make me go slightly strange around the knees. and. People who have been out in this say it is brain scramblingly fast to the point that they start to feel a bit uneasy. So, you know, it certainly would be exciting to get the most mega car on the road. So he offered me a Taycan Turbo GT. This was on the Monday, right? I got a call on the Monday and an email on the Monday saying if you want it, you need to lock it in by Sunday of the same week. So not a lot of time. Choosing the spec was easy. I had that done in a day and it would have been 10 grand down to lock in my build slot. My spec was pale blue metallic, and of course not the Vysark package. I think the Vysark package is cool, but a bit of a folly. I'll discuss the reasons for that later in this video, but let's look at the decision-making process and my outcome of that decision-making process now. I'd have to have the spec locked in by the Sunday, not hard to do. The problem was there were going to be no finance quotes available. The car was too new, it only just dropped, and VWFS, I guess, didn't have the means to quote for this car just as yet. So we would be effectively going in blind. I would be committing to this car before having seen how the finance might look, which is a little bit unnerving. And kind of the closest we could potentially do is to look at a new Taycan Turbo S and see how that looked over three years and spec it up to a cost similar to the new Taycan Turbo GT. Now, I appreciate GT cars should hold their value well, right? But there is a lot of unknowns with the Turbo GT. 
frankly too many unknowns if you ask me. So how did that look with the Porsche Turbo, the Porsche Taycan Turbo S? Well it looked very bad if I'm honest. Uh, the finance rate APR is 9%. 190k list we got it up to and at the end of a three three year lease it was worth about sixty thousand pounds so absolutely tanking in value to the point that it is painful right and then there is a situation that i have with this car right now so this is a Taycan turbo s and when i got this car it was very favorable indeed in terms of the finance rate 6.45% and the guaranteed future value of this car at the end of a three-year term is a massive 94,000 pounds right now Porsche my OPC think this car and we're at 20 months into the agreement 21 months not long is only worth mid to high 70s so already 20k below that gfv in another 16 months time or so so goodness knows what it's going to be worth by the time we get there and goodness knows what it could be worth in may even just may by the time i would be taking delivery of that tycon turbo GT, that awesome bit of kit. So we know Taycans have absolutely tanked in value right now and all of this is being baked into current finance offers and Porsche are absolutely going to be losing themselves on this car already if I was to kind of VT it and pay the difference and hand it back. It would still be a significant loss for Porsche so the best thing I can do with this is simply keep it as is for the moment on finance. and. If I had decided to go forward with that Taycan Turbo GT, I'd have had to pay to get out of this and then pay a hefty deposit down onto that Taycan Turbo GT. And of course we didn't know what the finance was, so if I was to lock in that slot, and there's not many slots per dealer right now, one or two if that, if I was to lock in that slot, pay my 10 grand, put my spec in, and then get the finance through for the GT later, look down at it and find it was completely miserable and unworkable then I would have effectively had to hand the car back right and I didn't think that was really fair really the right thing to do not the fair thing to do not the gentlemanly thing to do you know you've got to look after your dealers as well if they're offering you slots for these cars and it needs to go to the rightful home and it, sh it needs to be the spec the person who's buying it wants that's the, the right thing to do so I had to say to the dealer to the sales guy look I'm just gonna have to let this one go really appreciate it but please let it go to somebody else who can follow through with it regardless you know somebody who's much more financially capable than my myself at the moment buying it through a company however or is just you know got that kind of money lying about I, I let it pass up I let it go to the the rightful owner and I believe it's gone to somebody who spec the Vice Arc package. But this isn't the only thing, this isn't the only problem that potentially I would have had with this car, the GT car, going forward, is the finance and how that would look. It is the, the principle of the car. It's not your average GT car. Now, we know GT cars should hold their value incredibly well, and they do hold their value incredibly well, but even now, all the ICE GT cars are on a downward trajectory. The, the GT4 RS, probably the most hallowed one of recent times, is trending back down towards a list. You know these were flipped for hundred, hundreds of thousands over list at some point, certainly put up on the market for significantly over lists so these cars are absolutely trending down right now and I have to ask myself would an EV GT car really be one you could flip for over list or would it struggle with value because you can get a Thai car now which is essentially the kind of the same platform really for 50 60k a good one right so buying a new one for close to 200k which it would have been 200,000 pounds 
I just don't know if it makes financial sense right now, given what's happening with EVs as a whole, given what's happening with Taycans as a whole. So that is the first challenge. The second challenge is the G Turbo GT is positioned as a track car, right? Because you can get the Vice Arc package. The Vice Arc package deletes the rear seats, adds a load of carbon, and tries to save a bit of weight. I think about 70 or 80 kilos, right? Trying to save weight on an EV is a bit like turning up to an earthquake with a dustpan and brush. You're kind of going to be laughed at, really. It's a fruitless exercise, right? All that weight is the battery, right? I do think the Taycan Turbo GT is a phenomenal looking car. They've saved a bit of weight on the new cotton ceramics as well, but the Taycan Turbo GT, the Taycan is never going to be a track car. No matter how much you try, it just isn't. The fundamental difference between the Taycan Turbo GT and the Taycan Turbo S, the new version, they pretty much look the same. And the key difference is the inverter, the silicon carbide inverter. You go from a 600 amp one to a 900 amp one. That 900 amp, more amps, more heat. And I have seen reports that people who've had early exposure to the Turbo GT have seen it overheat on track and throttle itself down after as little as seven minutes because of potentially all that extra heat. So I think, you know, the engineers have whacked this this 900 amp inverter in there that of course converts the DC into AC for the motors to get as much power out of it as possible. But it's still only a two motor car, not a three motor car like the competition, the Plaid specifically, right? So for me, the Taycan Turbo GT is never really going to be a track car now. You get those flappy paddles for the, um, the, the, the attack mode, that 10 seconds of 950 brake horsepower boost. The car is going to be mental to drive. It's going to be probably the craziest thing that I think I would have ever been in. And anyone that buys one will probably be saying the same. It is just going to be ballistic. I mean, this thing here, the Turbo S, is ballistic enough. This is a pre facelift the post facelift even more ballistic. Also, look at the risk. There are more EVs coming out from Porsche. There's the Macan and there's the new um, Cayman EV platform, the Boxster, Ca Boxster EV platform coming out, right? So that is going to be a more track-focused car, I hope. Going to be lighter, going to be more fun, uh, just generally more focused. And will that have a, detriment a detrimental effect on Taycan values as well as more people gravitate towards these? It's a massive gamble, isn't it, for Porsche? just simply deleting the ice Cayman and just going to an EV model only. It's going to really upset a lot of petrols. But conversely, the pre-sales of the EV Macan apparently are through the roof. So there is demand for these cars. People do want them. It is just a different audience to those who want the ice cars now. They've got to appeal to a new market. They'll get new, they'll lose ice heads, but probably gain more people who are a bit more cool with the concept of an EV. So. That is another spectre on the horizon for the Taycan Turbo GT. And then simply, it's the cost of the thing. It's 200K, 200K. Now, it's a lot of money for an EV. An EV, and you know, we don't know how well it's going to hold its value. We don't know how much it's going to depreciate. It is a very risky buy at 200K. If you can throw that money away, go for it. You know, be my guest, right? But it is a hugely, hugely risky buy. The Plaid, you can get a Plaid new for £110,000 cheaper than you can the Taycan Turbo GT. £110,000 cheaper. I calculated that that would, at my local Costco, provide me with about 470,000 cans of Coke Zero. It's a significant sum of money, right? And I've previously videoed on this that I think the Taycan is massively overpriced. And I appreciate if you're buying through a business, it's good that it's overpriced because it's more money to offset against your profits, right? I do keep saying that, but it is a fact, right? So there's a, a plus and a minus for it being so expensive. But it is just, a lot of money, a lot of money to swallow for an EV car that you're going to have to replace the battery in at some point, guaranteed, right? That's just simply something you're going to have to do once the car falls out of warranty 
and you know if you buy an ice car you can expect to probably still have that if you look after it 30 years later my my Renault 5 GT Turbo I've still got that still the same engine still going strong 32 33 years later 34 years later right so yeah it it is a tough pill to swallow and you know I really do appreciate Porsche the local APC giving me the opportunity to get into one of those cars um, and who knows I might do it at some point in the future I'm really interested to see what happens with the values of these on the second hand market people are undoubtedly going to be trying to flip them I'm sure for over list potentially the question is right is the market going to be willing to take it that is the key point here is the market going to be willing to take it I'm not so sure about that but I wanted to share this with you because it was a real struggle going through this decision making process getting a GT allocation really not a full fat GT allocation I'd say but to get one nevertheless you know huge opportunity but one I had to, to let pass me by right now so I'd love to hear your comments on this really do appreciate your support of the channel if you're a watch a regular watcher uh, do comment do subscribe if you haven't already I really appreciate you watching this one do stay safe stay well see you on the next one and bye for now